Hey everybody, my name is Chris and I'm a tutor here at Chegg.com and I mostly do math and a little bit of computer science. And in this video we're going to find an example of an ideal in Z cross C that's prime but not maximal. And we're going to use the first isomorphism theorem for rings to do this. So let's consider the set I equals the set of all points M comma zero such that M is an integer. Okay, and then we're going to want to define the map f from z cross z to z. And we're going to define this map to be the projection onto the second coordinate map. So in other words, f of m comma n equals n for all m n in z cross z. Okay, now we want to show that this is a homomorphism that is surjective, and it's pretty obviously surjective because if we have any, so let's say let n in z, uh, then for example, for example, f of 0 comma n equals n. So for any n in z, we can always find a corresponding point in z comma z such that uh, f sends that point to the n and z. So this is surjective. And uh, to show it's a homomorphism, we're going to go ahead and say let's uh, let a1, a2, b1, and b2 be integers. And then we want to consider f of a1 comma b1 plus f of a2 comma b2. Well, by definition of f, f of a1 comma b1 is just b1, uh, b1. And f of a2 comma b2 is just b2. So this is b1 plus b2. But notice also that this is equal to f of a1 plus a2 comma b1 plus b2. Because here, the second coordinate is b1 plus b2. So when we evaluate this point uh, in the function f, then we're going to get b1 plus b2. And it doesn't actually matter what the first coordinate is, but in particular it is true when we have a1 plus a2. So this does show that f of a1 b1 plus f of a2 b2 equals f of a1 plus a2 comma b1 plus b2. Now we also have to check f of a1 b1 times f of a2 b2. And again, f of a1 b1 is just b1, and f of a2 b2 is just b2. So we have b1 times b2, and note that this is equal to f of a1 a2 comma b1 b2. Because remember, this function f sends this point to the second coordinate in z, so b1 b2, b1 b2. And again, it doesn't actually matter what the first coordinate is, but in particular, it is true when our first coordinate is a1 times a2. So this shows that this does in fact equal this. And combining that with the fact that this equals this, and the fact that the uh, function is surjective, we have a surjective homomorphism from z cross z to z. Now what we want to check is the kernel of f. So notice that f of m comma n equals 0 uh, if and only if n equals 0. So m could be anything it, uh, we want it to be, basically. But notice that uh, n equals 0 if and only if m comma n is an element of our ideal that we defined earlier. Okay, And we have kind of took it for granted that this is an ideal. It's not too hard to show that it's an ideal, but we will skip that for this video just for the sake of saving time. So f of m comma n is 0 if and only if n is 0 and n is 0 if and only if m comma n is an i. So in other words, m comma n is in the kernel of f if and only if m comma n is an i. So what that means actually is that i equals the kernel of f. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, what we have here is a map f from z cross z to z, 
it's a surjective homomorphism, and the kernel of f is this ideal i. So by the first isomorphism theorem for rings, what we have then is z cross z mod i is isomorphic to z. And I do want to point out that this isn't really a standard notation, especially for rings, but just in the interest of saving time and space. So z cross z mod i is isomorphic to z. Now, because z is an integral domain, then that tells us that i is principal. However, z is not a field, therefore that tells us that i is not maximal. So this ideal i is principal but not maximal by the first isomorphism theorem for rings and by a few properties uh, of how maximal ideals relate to fields and how principal ideals relate to integral domains. So again, this is an integral domain, which means this is principal. And also, this is not a field, which means this is not maximal. So this ideal right here, i, is an example of a prime ideal that's not maximal. Right? So this has been an example of using the first isomorphism theorem to show that we can find an ideal in z cross z that's prime but not maximal. I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.